as we saw in the first segment, there are a lot of ways that someone could write a date or enter data to a database. While we can look at this list of dates and we can pick out what piece of information is the month, what piece of information is the day, and what piece of information is the year, a computer can't automatically do that. And so we have to have a way to be able to tell the computer where to find that month information, that day information, that year information, um, so that it can properly format this character data into an actual date. Right about now, you may be thinking, but we didn't have to do that when we formatted our dates in our current data into, uh, from character into dates. And that's because of the ISO format. The as date function is expecting the date to be provided to it as an ISO format. And if it is, then you don't have to tell it where to look for things because it already knows. If that information is not already in an ISO format, then you have to be able to tell the computer where that information is. Fortunately for us, there's an easy way for us to be able to specify exactly what, where the information is that the computer is looking for. And so let's go see that on our studio. So as a reminder, in the last segment, we used this highlighted line here to change our, our date, which was being stored as character information, into a date format that the computer recognized. And all we did was use the as date function and then uh, give it the column that we wanted to convert into dates. And you'll notice that there's no other information that we're passing to it here. And that is, again, because of that ISO format, the computer doesn't need it. So what happens if we have a date that the computer does need to know what's where? Well, let's do something simple. Uh, we'll do a test date. The day that I'm recording this is the 27th of August. So I will write it exactly like my computer is displaying it down in the corner. Uh, 08 with a slash, the day, 27, slash, and a four digit year. This is not the ISO format, which should be four digit year, a dash, month, dash, day. If we try and pass this to as date, we're going to get an error. So let's just demonstrate that. Format equal as date. And we'll just give it test date as is. I'm going to run both of these lines by highlighting them. And what we see is a strange error in the console window, which says that the character string is not in a standard unambiguous format, which is the computer's way of saying, you didn't give it an ISO date. So how do we tell it where to find what it's looking for? We add an argument called format. And what we're gonna do is tell it exactly what we're giving it and where to find that information that it's looking for. That first chunk of information is a month. And we do that by doing a percent %m. The percent %m is the way to say, in this spot, you will find month information as a numeric. We then say slash, you can ignore that as the computer. But then your next piece of information you're going to want to pull from this character string. This is where the computer can find the day information. We give the dash again and then we give it a percent %y. And the percent %y says, this is where you will find four digit year information. And now if we run this, there are no errors in the console window if you look down there. And in your environment window, what you can see now is that we see the format values here. The data is now being displayed as an ISO date format and everything is in the correct place. It was able to correctly identify the year, the month, the day, and now it recognizes this as a, a date object and can work with it uh, as we would want it to be able to work with it. So what happens if you have something that's a little more complicated? Uh, somebody has been doing long form dates like September 3rd, comma, 2010. It's very similar in principle, except we use some slightly different codes. So instead of the percent %m, which is telling the computer that the month is being displayed as a numeric, we want to be able to tell the computer that in this, this first part, it's looking for a month being displayed as the full name, which we do by telling it percent %b. There's a space after that month, so we put the space in the format. 
so that the computer knows that the next thing after the month is a space. The next item in our date is the day. So we do percent D. There's a comma, so we put that immediately after the percent D. Another space and a percent Y. And now, if we run both of these lines, no errors in our console. And if we look over at our environment window, we can see format has been updated to now read 2010-09-03. So again, it was able to identify exactly the pieces of information we wanted it to find and extract that. And now uh, using that information as a date object. To do date formatting like this, you need to know those key codes that help the computer understand what type of information it's looking for. To be able to tell the computer how to find the information it's looking for in whatever strange format your date is being provided in, there are particular codes that we can give the computer to help it understand what pieces of information it's looking for where. The main codes that you will use for formatting dates are these. Percent %d, which tells the computer the day in numeric. Percent %m, which tells the computer where to find the month information and that that month information is going to also be in numeric. If you have non-numeric month information in your date, there are two codes that might be relevant for you. One is the percent %b, lowercase b, which tells it month, but that the month is abbreviated. What does that mean? The standard character abbreviations for months that we use, aug, oct, December DEC. If we have the month in its full character form, we do a percent uppercase B. Years often come displayed one of two ways, either the last two digits or the full four digits. And you can tell the computer where and what kind of year information by doing a percent lowercase i for two digit years. Or percent uppercase y for four digit years. What I'd like you to do now is just to practice a little bit with these codes and with formatting dates. And just like we did with the test date example where we created a couple of different dates in different formats, I want you to create a date in a, whatever format you want and use these codes to, to then tell the computer how to find that information and make sure that this is working for you and that you understand how the as date is used and how to tell it how to read unconventional formats. In our next segment, we're going to explore how the computer is actually storing the information from these dates and apply this knowledge to starting to add time information to our date time formatting.